This is the London Legal Podcast, presented to you by Hodge, Jones and Allen. Hello and welcome to this episode of the London Legal Podcast. My name is Chun Wong and I am head of the dispute resolution team at Hodge, Jones and Allen. Today, we'll be looking at how to obtain a limited grant of probate to administer an estate where a will has been damaged, lost or is unattainable. I have with me my colleague, Raphael Singer, who is a senior associate in the private client team. Hi, Chin. Thanks very much for having me. This is a very important area because although a will is usually needed for probate, the probate registry can accept a damaged will with an explanation of how it came to be damaged, and they can also accept explanations and evidence if a will has been lost or unobtainable. The main point here is that a testator's wishes can still be carried out even if the will is damaged, lost or unavailable. Thank you, Raf. Firstly, can you give us a basic outline about how you would normally apply for a grant of probate and what kind of documents you would need? Okay, so a grant of probate is the name of the grant you need when you are putting a valid will to probate. Two other common grants are a grant of letters of administration, and you apply for this when there is no will, and also a grant of letters of administration with will annexed. And you apply for this when the will is valid, but the named executors in the will have either died or, for whatever reason, are unable or unwilling to act. So dependent on the facts of the matter, you apply for probate, either online or using a paper application. And generally, the simpler the matter, the more likely it is that you must apply online. So the documents required when applying for a grant of probate differ depending on when the deceased died because new rules have come in for deaths on or after the 1st of January this year, 2022, and also whether there is tax to pay. But generally, the documents required for probate will be the original will. For a taxable estate, you will need a special receipt from HMRC to confirm you have submitted the tax return. For deaths before the 1st of January 2022, if there was no tax to pay, you would submit a simple tax return explaining this. But for deaths after the 1st of January 2022, this return would actually be included in the application for probate itself. Um, You would also need the actual probate application, and you would also need um, any other evidence um, that would confirm why a named executor in the will isn't applying for probate. For instance, uh, a death certificate, if that executor has died, or a deed of renunciation, if that executor is renouncing their title, or a confirmation that they have had powers reserved on them. So, Ralph, it seems the original will is a key document for getting a grant of probate. And how would you go about trying to locate an original will and where would it normally be kept? So there's no normal place for a will. The testator, which is the name of the person who wrote the will, can decide to keep it wherever they want. Most legal firms offer their client a storage facility, which is often free. And of course, HDAs is free. The first place to inquire then is with the firm that drafted the will, if the solicitor's firm did draft the will. You should also, of course, failing that, check the testator's personal papers and belongings. Some banks provide storage service, so you can check with them if the testator had an arrangement to leave the will with them. The testator may have left the will with the actual relevant government body, HMCTS. And as well as physical storage, the testator may have registered their will with a private body, such as the National Will Register or a body called Certainty, and that makes it easier for those entitled to see the will i.e. the executors, to then be able to locate where the original will is. And if we've tried all the steps you've identified, Raph, and we still can't find the original will, does that mean we're not going to be able to get a grant of probate? And the good answer to that is no. You still can get a limited grant of probate, and the word limited here means that it's limited until uh, the original will or a more authentic copy of the will is found. My understanding is that in order to apply for a limited grant, an executor would need to apply under Rule 54 of the Non-Contentious Probate Rules 1987. The application has to be supported with an affidavit or a witness statement which sets out the following. So A, the will's existence after the death of the deceased. B, the contents of that will. C, which was duly and properly executed and D, the accuracy of the copy, draft, or reconstruction. So 
In this scenario, who has the burden of proof and what sort of evidence would be useful? The burden of proof is fairly and squarely on the executor or the applicant. And they have to prove on a balance of probability that the will was validly executed, the will had not been revoked as at the date of death, and that any copy will was a genuine copy of the original will as executed. Useful information in support of an application would include things like a copy of the executed will, evidence from the attesting witnesses, evidence from the solicitor or firm who drafted the will, family or friends who can confirm the relevant facts, and also efforts that you've made to try and locate the original will and why the original will is no longer available. Can you explain what the presumption of revocation is? It's when it's known that an original will was in the possession of the deceased, but then cannot be located after their death. So then there's a presumption that the will has been destroyed with the intention of revoking that will. And this would mean that probate would then have to be granted on any earlier original will or the rules of intestacy if there is no earlier will. Can you explain what happens when there's not even a copy of the executed will? In those instances, you can still apply for a limited grant of probate if you have a draft and you can prove that the draft reflected the deceased's intentions and their instructions. Ideally, you want to be able to show that this was the final draft which was sent to the deceased for signing and the final version of the signed copy. As a last resort, you could also apply for a grant of probate if you are able to reconstruct the terms of a will. So, for example, if someone had gone to a firm of solicitors and given instructions on what they wanted in that will, but a solicitor hadn't got as far as preparing a draft will, for example. It's quite clear, though, that you need to spend time and money in this process, which is likely to be even more difficult if it's contested by other parties. So, Raf, to wrap things up, are there any practical tips for our listeners in order to avoid some of the pitfalls we've just spoken about? Yeah, I think it's really important for a testator to let their executors know where their last will is, because the last properly executed will that they make is going to be the only one that matters. They don't need to show the executors the contents of the will, but they can tell them which solicitor's firm it's being held with, or they can tell them it's been registered with this private body like the National Wills Register. It's really vital to avoid as many complications as possible during the probate process, because this will keep costs down that would otherwise have to be met by estate funds. Thanks, Raf. I hope our listeners have learned a thing or two in this podcast and can take away some practical pointers when it comes to managing their own wealth and affairs. Limited grants of probate are also useful in other circumstances, especially when there are disputes over an estate, but that's probably for another time and another podcast. Be sure to follow Hodgdens and Allen on Spotify and on social media so that you can keep up to date with our podcast and all aspects of the law. We also have a blog on this topic with more details and advice which our listeners may find useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And of course, if you found the podcast useful, please do share it. Thank you. You've been listening to the London Legal Podcast, presented to you by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors.